As we go about our daily lives in the city centre, it's not often that we stop and take in the buildings all around us and think about the creative brains that must be behind the designs. Around us are many late 19th century and early 20th century buildings created by one Norfolk man, born in East Dereham, educated at Brackendale School and the Norwich School of Art. He was George Skipper. And for one golden decade between 1896 and 1906, he was very much the in-demand architect of Norwich. He received the hottest commissions, and perhaps the most well-known of all is right here, the Royal Arcade. The forerunners to today's shopping malls were the Victorian arcades, covered avenues of shops in the centres of town. And here in Norwich, we have one of the finest, created in 1899. To discover more about George Skipper, I'm meeting with retired architect David Riddell. This is actually a very important building in the life of George Skipper. It cer certainly is, Chris. It's, this is um, number seven. It's now part of Gerald's, but when he a department store, but when he um, built it, this was his office, and he had up to 50 people working here. This was, and he was at the height of his uh, height of his powers. It's quite unusual uh, in, in Norwich with the use of the decorative panels in particular. What I love about this, that architects couldn't advertise uh, in those days. So what he's done, uh, which is a bit cheeky, but rather clever of him, he's put pictures of himself with his buildings, you know, being a, a clever chap, has also got his wife in, in, one, in the other one with, with her joining him visiting the site. When Red Lion Street was widened for the arrival of the trams in 1900, Skipper was responsible for two buildings. The building on the left, Commercial Chambers, is quite exquisite. The facade is incredibly rich and embellished with so much going on when you, when you study it. And surmounting the whole thing is an incredibly rich skyline of an obelisk and a cupola with all sorts of varied stone and colours being used. And on the right-hand side with the savings bank, very much the Baroque style. Yes, much more, uh, uh, again, exuberant, but nowhere near as rich as, as commercial chambers, but a fine building for a fine city. So, David, most of Skipper's buildings show his favoured motifs. There's the recessed bays, the cartouches, the swags. And here on Surrey Street, we've got a classic example. Oh, you have. Uh, classic is exactly what it is. More than probably any of his other buildings, it, it uses the classic revival uh, vocabulary of, uh, of Greek and Roman architecture. And a lot of Skipper's buildings have these decorative swags. Was that very much a late Victorian architecture design or was that something that Skipper brought in? Like other architects at the time, was able to, to use these different uh, or ornamental styles. He was happy to mix them all up. He, he wasn't a purist. He, he was more of a pick and mix. It was thought through and it added something. Throughout his professional life, George Skipper was essentially a workaholic and considered a perfectionist. He carried out numerous other commissions, both in Norfolk and around the country. He lived a long and full life, finally dying at the age of 92 in August 1948. So what is the legacy of George Skipper? Well, it's all around us as we walk our city streets. So next time you pass any of these buildings, do take a moment to stop and take in the carved swags, the elaborate doorways, the bay windows, all grand designs of Norfolk's own George Skipper. Mm -hmm.